Hello everyone and welcome back to making the XB70 Valkyrie in Blender for Kerbal Space Program. In previous videos I said for a flight sim game like Kerbal Space Program, but in this case we're going to be bringing it through Unity into the game and so this is very Kerbal Space Program focused. Now the plane looks a little bit odd right now and that's because our colliders are active. I could hide the collider and then the front part looks alright. Remember we have two separate textures, one for the body and one for the wing. Uh, it doesn't really matter right now which one we have displayed because the the texture will be applied in Unity. The texture file is something separate from the file that we export from Blender. The Blender file will not have the tech. It'll have the UV mapping, but it won't have the texture coming with it. So we need the colliders active in order to export them as well. And I actually want this collider nacelle to be parented to the body, so it goes along with it. So. That's that, like that. But we do need to shift things around a little bit. Taking a look at the body first, uh, we'll see that its location is has a y-axis thing going on there. And I want to do control A to apply the location. And now it's where it ought to be at zero, zero. We should go through and take a look. Um, let's, let's, let's hold off on, especially the stuff that yeah, has rotations. We're going to have to do this a little bit systematically. Uh, the first time I tried to record it, I failed to do things in as systematic a way as I should have. Let's focus on the body first. We need to export the body itself, the collider, and the nacelle. And so those pieces in particular. And they don't have any animations, so that's simple enough. We export as collada.dae. And I'm going to export it as XB70 body. You can see I tried this already. Um, selection only, and definitely apply modifiers, just in case you didn't apply some modifier like edge split or something. And yes, that should be sufficient, so let's export Collada. Okay, now I've hidden the body and we need to split up the horizontal stabilizer. So I'm going to tab, and oh, we have to first apply mirroring. So apply the mirroring, then tab, press P, separate by loose parts. And then we have two horizontal stabilizers and we go back into object mode and this is the left one so double click and call that L and double click that one and go R. But now we've got an interesting thing, they're sort of floaty above there and remember the zero zero point for each of these parts is going to be the center of mass. Now I'm not too concerned about the center of mass in sort of the X direction by M in uh, in this direction and that direction. And here's the catch. We need to also make sure that we figure out the exact location it's going to be attached to the body. So what we're going to do is use the 3D cursor. See the 3D cursor? Going to do shift right click to indicate the attachment point, which will also be the center of mass point. OK, so right there is what I'm going to yeah, I, I think it should be a little bit further back. Well, maybe around there. Okay, so we can look at that point by going to View, 3D Cursor Location, and we've got the X coordinate. I'm going to round it out just a little bit so that'll be easier to deal with. You'll see why. And then uh, 1.58. Okay, so I'm going to get those numbers down right now. So this is horizontal stabilizer uh, left and 1.09, negative 0 0.95, 1.58. Incidentally, these numbers, the um, axes are going to be completely different in Kerbal Space Program and Unity, so watch out. And uh, yeah, so that's good. But again, we need to shift it down so it's zero, zero point is that point right there. So I've got those numbers down because that will be the point that we place the attachment node on the body. When it comes to the horizontal stabilizer, we are going to uh, have that point be the zero, zero point. So I'm going to press G to move it. And then in the X direction, press X, gonna do minus 1.09. And then in the Y direction, so let me just uh, apply that and then G, Y, gonna do 0.95, and then 
gz, I'm going to do minus 1.58. Okay, so does that look like the zero, zero point is at that location? Yeah, so it's basically undoing the numbers that we have here. It set that to the zero, zero point. And then, of course, we can, um, we should apply scale, but we should also apply location. So now that's the zero, zero point for this part. It's complicated. So, uh, of course, if you're only making a single part out of everything, like you're just making the body, that's a lot easier. But if you're making all these other parts, it can be a little bit complicated. So that's going to be our horizontal stabilizer lift. Selecting only that part, it does. it's its own collider. That makes things easier. We're going to export as collider. It has no animation. We're, the control surface will be made in Kerbal Space Program with a B9 procedural part. And that's the horizontal stabilizer left. So that's good. Selection only. Apply modifiers. And everything else is good. Okay, so that's that part. Now what about the right one? Well, uh, first of all, its its point is actually where the where the old one was. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move it the same exact way, except that the x-axis is negative for the node on the, on the right one because it's on the opposite side in the x-axis direction. So when we move it, we're going to actually make that positive. So it is negative right now. And so to move it to the zero, zero point, we have to move it in a positive direction. So G, we already got the numbers down for the left one and it's gonna be the same numbers. So X 1.09, enter. And then G, Y, 0.95, enter, G, Z. You could probably do these all at once, but I want to be careful. A negative, negative 1.58. And we double check. That looks like that that point is at the zero, zero point, which is fine by me. And let's apply scale, apply location. Its origin point is now there. And export. Same stuff. Now, for global orientation, you could sort of reorient them here, but I think it's safer to do it in Unity when we can see the results. Right now, if we try to fix the global orientation, uh, like we say Y up here, I, I don't know whether it should be Y up or negative Y up necessarily. We want to actually see that in motion. So anyway, this export, and we can hide that. Okay, good times. And then the process is similar for the wings, but we have a lot of stuff on the wings. First of all, we need to split up the hinge front. So it's already got the mirror modifier done. Tab, select all, P, separate by loose parts. We get four of these because it got an extra face that it doesn't need. So back in object mode, uh, that's the hinge front and I keep trying to right click to rename, but we can just double click. Uh, right, and then this one, this one is a spare face that I won't need. And then this one, hopefully, you know, it's like one of those spare parts in a box and you wonder whether you actually need it or not. Um, hinge front left, and this one is a spare face. Okay, so we've got these two hinge fronts and we're going to have those go along with the wing. So hinge front left goes along with wing left. So we'll just make it its parent, keep the transform. And uh, scaling needs to be applied. So that uh, wing right already had applied scale. The colliders have applied scale. Okay, and uh, rotation left, outer wing, we are not going to mess with that rotation because that's part of the animation. But we can take that rotation and make the wing left the parent. And let's just briefly make sure that didn't mess up the animation. It did not. Let me move that back. Okay. So that's all good. Now we have to... Everything that's supposed to go along with the wing is now under the wing. 
and we'll do that also for the wing right. So the rotation right and also the hinge front. Okay, so the wings are all together now. Now we will want to do the same thing that we did for the canards. And that's picked a spot where we think that its center of mass will be. And I'm going to decide, we can move the center of mass in the configuration file later. But I'm going to select for now approximately, actually around there-ish. And again, I'm not going to be concerned about in this direction where the center of mass is. I'm just concerned in relation to the body in the long longitudinal axis. We want that point sitting there. And that's, that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to pick that spot for the attachment point of the wings on the body. And we're going to see where the 3D cursor is. I'm going to round out these numbers so that we can deal with them. So that when I type it in, it's easier, right? So this is the wing left, and I'm getting the numbers down so that I can type them in, or the negative of them in, more precisely. And then the wing right will be just the same x, all the same values except the x one is negative. Okay, so that being the case, we can now move this wing. So obviously not in edit mode, and press G X 0.82, enter G Y negative 30.1, enter and G Z 0.26. And should, that should put that point right at the uh, origin. It's actually the the point isn't actually at the origin. It's I would think it ought to be actually, but okay. So the attachment point is off to the side, but. Actually, the wing is at zero here, the root of the wing. If we uh, hide the body here, you can see the root of the wing is already at zero. So instead of having the x coordinate be 0.82, which we had, we're going to just make that zero, 0.0, .0 for both the left wing and right wing. So we don't have to move it in the x direction. We just need to move it in the y and z. Uh, we'll apply the location first. Well, it doesn't matter. We'll apply the location later anyway. So uh, G Y thirty point uh, negative thirty point one negative thirty point one and G Z zero point two six and that gets the point that we want at zero zero. Then we'll do Control A apply location. Now its origin is there, and we can export. But this is a part with with animation. So first we select hierarchy. So we select all the parts underneath it, and that's why we parented them in the first place. And then we export as FBX because it's got the animation. And this is gonna be the wing left, selected objects only. And we're gonna just keep everything, apply modifiers, but on the animation, uncheck NLA strips and all actions because otherwise it'll split every little bit that's going along uh, the animation will be a separate animation, so we don't want that. We just want one big animation. Okay, so that being the case, we can export that. Okay, it didn't give me any warnings. I wish it'd give me a confirmation message, but it's fine. It's okay. So we've done that one. We'll just hide all those bits. And then the wing right goes the same way, except that, and because it's at zero zero already, it's exactly the same way. So we just go. G and then uh, we go Y negative 30.1 uh, GZ 0.26 and it's at the right location control A apply the location and then save the same way if you've already made changes as long as you haven't restarted blender it'll keep what we've checked marked and unchecked so that is wing right that we want this time though okay so we've exported that, we can hide that, and the process is exactly the same 
for the vertical stabilizer, except we only have to do one. We only have to do one of the vertical stabilizer. And of course, now its, it's uh, origin is off to the side there. Let's control A, apply the location, and that will be okay. Now this will be good because for all of them, their attachment node will be at 0, 0, 0. That makes it easy. Uh, the only issue is making sure that the node is facing in the right axis when we... I'll show you in the configuration. That'll be easier. Okay, so just this vertical stabilizer export Collada because there's no animation. And it'll be just this VS selection only. All the other stuff is the same. So export. And we're done in Blender until we need to figure out the masses, which involves a trick that I'll talk about in a minute. But let's turn to Unity and import all of these parts and the two textures. Okay, so here I have the folder where all my Blender stuff ends up, and I need the body. I need the texture for the body. I need, I don't need that, that was, uh, forget that. Uh, DAE, 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 and uh, we need the wing FBXs. And we also need the texture for the wing. So that's all the stuff we can drag in. Now orientation is going to be a peculiar problem. We'll start with the body first. Now we don't have to do any fancy stuff with animations on the body at least. I'm just going to drag it in for now. Now it's important to note that for orientation in Kerbal Space Program we need this pointed upward because all orientation is sort of based on the VAB and up is forward. Now the axis is, this is the zero zero point, let's remember. So we have to be consistent and uh, it's gonna be the X axis that we rotate by. I'm not gonna rotate any other way for now, uh, but it's possible that we need to rotate in the Y direction, sort of like this, depending on what we see in Kerbal Space Program, but we're not gonna mess with that right now. And everything has to be rotated the same way uh, when we um, do stuff, but the um, attachment nodes are going to have to be oriented right, and we'll find that out in Kerbal Space Program. It will be fine. Uh, we won't think about that right now. First, uh, the texture needs to be the XB70 body texture. Okay, I haven't made a bump map yet. Um, that is a little bit involved for airplanes, actually. You could have a random noise bump map, but I'd rather not and I'm going to remove the mesh uh, renderer for the colliders and I'm going to add physics mesh collider convex and you had better get nice green con uh, convex colliders like this and this is looking pretty good now one more one other thing we need to do is make the air intake right because this actually has air intakes so in order to do that I'm going to create an empty and we are going to make sure that the blue arrow is oriented in the direction that the air is getting sucked in from. So that's like this. Okay. And then we're going to locate the origin of that empty. Basically, I'm just going to create one. I'm not going to assume that the two are separate, though, you know, it's all complicated. But I'm assuming it's going to get sucked in in this direction, and that's fine. And we are going to call this intake. <laughs> uh, not, not a huge surprise. And we can par parent it to the body or whatever. And so all of that is fine. We have one material. That's correct. And I don't see anything else we have to do here. Um, if you had engines, we could talk about thrust transform. There are a lot of other kinds of transforms. The thrust transform is exactly like the air intake, except you name it thrust in lowercase, big T for the transform, but the rest of the letters are lowercase. And again, the blue arrow is the direction of the thrust. If you want gimbling on the engine, you'll have to parent the engine to a gimbal. In other words, make the engine a child of an empty called gimbal. And then the gimbal is the same way. The blue arrow is the direction it's, uh, the thrust is in, basically. And then it'll gimbal in the plane with the X and Y, the red and green. So that's how the gimbal works. You have to parent the engine to it. And then the thrust transform will be underneath the engine. It'll, it'll be a child of the engine. Uh, RCS thrusters are the only really weird one because the RCS thrusters use the green arrow. And so... 
the thrust will go in the direction of the green arrow and it's capital R, capital C, capital S, and then lowercase on the word thruster. And so just make sure you name it like that. There are other things like solar panels and other stuff, but basically the same idea, you just create an empty to control it. The Kerbal Space Program is nice that the gimbling of the engine doesn't have to be an animation, uh, neither does the solar panel pivot. Those are all just empties that you create in Unity. So very simple. All right, that uh, settles the body. I'm just going to write that to a folder called XB70, of course. And I'm going to delete this out now. Now let's remember the rotation is negative 180. What did, the, what did it start out at? Let me just backtrack or I'll d delete it and let's bring it in again. So it started out at negative 90 basically and we made negative 180. We'll use that as a reference for the other parts that we bring in. Now the complicated one is this the wing parts and I'm gonna call the animation wing tilt. Whoop, wing tilt. It doesn't matter what you call it, that's not what will be visible in the game. But uh, you do have to remember what it is to reference it in the configuration file. You have to click apply. It's also good to check that it's working right. That is right. The we uh, re weird look on the wing is because of the collider. Um, under rig, you have to say legacy and apply. Okay. Now we are ready to, we might as well do all that for the right wing. Animate, animation type legacy, apply. And, oh, this wing did not get its animation. I'll have to sort that out in Blender. Let me delete that right wing. This wing seems to be fine. Let's make sure. Okay, it's in the right location. Uh, it's collider. That collider wing left mesh renderer should be off. And we will add the component for the mesh collider. Good. Outer wing can be its own collider. It got the hinge parts too, so it's not quite a normal convex thing. But uh, if we click convex, it seems to just go over it, so that's okay. If the convex collider has too many faces, that can cause problems. It'll be okay in Unity, but when you open it up in Kerbal Space Program, it'll have an error. So keep that in mind, the, the collider cannot have too many faces. So we've got the rotation, hinge, and that all looks good. And of course we need to change the texture now to the wing one. And that's good. We have only one material and we're gonna call it. And oh, I forgot to mention, I had uh, said so in a previous video, but do remember you have to import package, custom package, KSP part tools, you have to find KSP part tools and you haven't already on this game object you need to add component KSP part tools and that creates this little box here which allows you to export it in the right format and of course the shader is KSP's own shader and we're using the bump specular so when we see the material on here the shader has to be a KSP shader and in this case you have a bunch of selections but I'm going with the bump specular for now, even though I haven't made a bump map. Okay, hopefully that's clear. But I'm going to call this wing left now. Uh, well, just wing L. I'm going to write that one. Oh, wait, I forgot. We need to tilt it up. I mean, we don't need need, but it's probably a good idea. So here again, we're going to do minus 180. That seems to be the right direction, and we're not going to change anything else. Okay, now we write it. Okay, let me quickly uh, get the wing right fixed and I'll come back. Okay, so I just uh, failed to select all objects when I was exporting this. And of course the main wing part does not have an animation. So legacy, animations, wing tilt. Oops. Check that it works. It seems to. And we're going to get rid of the other wing and bring this wing in. So we're going to rotate it as before. Negative 180 should be correct. Check that the position is 0, 0, 0 so that the location is applied properly. 
get rid of the mesh renderer on the collider, add the other collider, and the same whole deal that we had. Okay, so now we have to do the other surfaces, and it's all just the same. Vertical stabilizer uses the wing texture. Uh, we just have to rotate it and then add the collider, all right, because the mesh renderer stays and it's its own collider. That's fine. Well, it's got green lines anyway. That's uh, good enough for me. And we just have to name it and then it's done. And that's the same for the rest of them, except the horizontal stabilizers uh, go with the body texture. Okay, so now we have all that stuff and all the configuration files. I've already written up the configuration file because I figured out that if I tried to explain it while doing it, it took too long. So I'll tell you what I did. Um, I took the Mark III cockpit shuttle configuration from the stock game. Uh, so, whoops, wrong one. It doesn't really matter which folder you get from, but squad, parts, uh, command, Mark III, uh, cockpit, and that. And what I did was, well, we didn't need the science, I didn't, I wasn't going to do the science experiment stuff, or we didn't need mod propellants, I didn't place a flag decal thing. Uh, we don't need an animation for the lights, because I didn't do that. And, but we kept the data transmitter. Uh, we uh, dumped the reaction wheel. I wasn't going to do the reaction wheel. Kept the electric charge, the module command, minimum crew one. And uh, I'm keeping the Mark III cockpit internal for my cockpit. And uh, mostly keeping the rest. And when we see the body configuration I have here, so I took the Mark III cockpit shuttle configuration, turned it into this body configuration. I deleted this mesh bit and instead used a different way of doing that, which is citing the model here and uh, identifying which where the model location is specifically. We're scaling it for stock, which is 64%, so that's what's going on here. Now, you remember all those numbers I wrote down when I was placing the 3D cursor at the location where I wanted the center of mass of each of those parts to be? Well, those are the exact numbers that I've got here. So 1.09, this is for the horizontal stabilizer, the wing, the vertical stabilizer, those are the locations that I wrote down and that we eventually shifted them by, well I shifted them by the negative of those in order to bring them up. Now um, we also have the orientation of the attachment nodes and so this is saying that it's positive in the in the x direction which makes sense because this is the one on the left and we want the body node to be pointing positive in the x direction and then on the opposite side for the left horizontal stabilizer we'll have that be negative so that they're facing each other otherwise they won't connect they have to be facing each other in that axis in order to connect and uh, on the right side the opposite is true and of course we had zeroed out all of these parts so for all of them their node their attachment node to the body is zero 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 We've got this COMM, COL, COP offset, and uh, those are that's from the delta. I'll talk about uh, wing parts in a bit. So obviously I renamed everything, and now the mass. So let's talk about how to get the mass. There is a plugin that may or may not come with Blender, but that you should use. And I think it might be one that comes with Blender. Oh, here we go. Mesh 3D Print Toolbox. That's the one. So look for that, make sure you have it enabled, and if you need to search the web, it might be on GitHub or something, if it's not, if it isn't bundled with Blender from the first place. It's probably bundled with Blender from the first place. Anyway, um, 3D printing, and so that plugin will add this tab over here. Remember, in to show or hide that. And what you do is you select the part you've got, and you can click area, and it'll collect this, uh, uh, collect calculate the surface area of that part okay and it's a good approximation that the surface area is associated with the mass of the part that's a reasonable thing to go with so I, I just went through and clicked area and got all the areas summed them up and then for each part got its percentage of the total area and so the body was 48.6 percent uh, the the wings were like 23% each or something like that 
and then there was small contributions from the vertical stabilizers and horizontal stabilizers. Then I looked up the empty mass of the XB70, subtracted out the engines, subtracted out about five tons for the control surfaces and landing gear, and I ended up with uh, 96.2 tons. Then I took that and multiplied it by the percentage for each of these parts and got my masses. So that's how I got the masses for the parts, and that's the number that you see here. I didn't change a whole lot of anything else. So that's, that's about it for the body. Main thing is to get the attachment nodes here. Oh, one other thing. I looked up the air intake, and so I went with the RAM air intake here. We don't need all this other information. All we need is this module resource air intake. Drag cube is complicated. That's probably not useful for our situation. I haven't made a, I don't even know if I need a module animate heat. I'm leaving that off. But the area I'm assuming is in uh, meters squared. And so I made an estimate on that based on, that. I mean, it's just a square intake. You don't even need any tool to figure that out. I don't know what the intake speed ought to be, but the mock curve I figured would be best to go with the RAM air intake rather than like the circular intake for slow velocities. So I copied this. I don't know what amount of intake air I should have applied. We'll see. That's something I'll need to sort out. But the actual physical area of the intake seemed to be around 6 meters squared. So if that's what that number ought to be, that's what it is. So I've added that in. And uh, intake transform name has to be the thing that we named it in Unity, of course. So that's one thing. Okay, so that's the body. Everything else uh, basically is a wing part, right? It's all aerodynamic surfaces. Uh, for everything, I once again um, use this way of citing the model, or the model location. You don't have to put the .mu, but basically it's whatever it's called in this. It is the .mu file that you're trying to identify. You don't have to worry about labeling the texture or anything. That was built into the .mu file when you made the file in Unity. Okay, so there's the left canard, the mass I calculated as explained, but this module lifting surface, ooh, uh, we seem to have a missing bracket. Yeah, okay. Let's make sure we aren't missing any other brackets, right? They're all, they're all there. Okay, so now I'm paranoid. Yeah, this one too. I think I didn't uh, copy that when I copied the shuttle delta wing from the stock game. So there's the stock shuttle delta wing. Uh, it has all this COM, COL, COP offset. We may need to do that um, because, well, we certainly need to that, do that on the body because there's no way that the body um, center of mass is all the way up here. It, uh, it tapers off quite a lot here, but then uh, the body includes these air intake, that, that bulkiness. So probably it's going to be like somewhere around here-ish. And a good estimate would be if we wanted to move the COM in this direction by 20 meters would be a good start, probably. Um, in fact, let me just do that right now. COM offset equals. So this is the x-axis. That axis ends up being the y-axis because if we, if Unity would like to pop up anytime, yep. Okay, uh, it's the y-axis is this way, and we want negative 20. So we got to say negative 20, which means that on these, because these should be in a negative direction, so probably we have this reversed. I'm going to hypothesize. That's a hypothesis, okay? Um, probably those are all reversed. 20.0 uh, and then 0.0. .0. So that'll move the COM, in theory, down to where it ought to be, or closer. All these other parts should have the COM at that zero, zero point that we made. But so that's what all that business is. And yeah, the module lifting surface copied from the delta wing. On this configuration, you see that they said that this amount of lift coefficient was for 16.5 meters squared. Well, I based my numbers on that, and of course on the wing left, for instance. We can just go ahead with the 3D printing, get the area. This is centimeters squared, which means you have to divide by 10,000 to get the meters squared. So this is uh, 40, um, actually, 
<laughs> maybe I should I, I'm getting blind to the numbers here okay too many digits divided by 10,000 is 436 okay so 436 meters squared but we have to divide by two because that's the total surface area of the top and bottom so we need to divide that by two for that surface and then we need to add in the amount for the outer wing surface and I did that already so that we when we take a look at uh, wing left I uh, so I took that number that I ended up getting divided it by the meter squared multiplied by the original number for the delta wing which is five and that's what got me the 81.03 that's what I did now we have the wing tilt thing this animate generic I copied off of uh, the cargo bay this is the mark II cargo bay in this case and it's just this uh, animate generic here and I just took it and I put it in here animation name has to be what we called it in unity I just called the start situation up the end situation down and the actual action toggle and kept everything else the same okay so that's wing left and that should be the same for wing right as well Note that the direction of the node reverses and nothing else on that changes. I think we are good to check all this out in Kerbal Space Program, in the stock game. Okay, so here we are in the game and I've typed in XB70 to see my parts. And the body's looking quite spiffy, if I do say so. Oh, we probably ought to have attachment nodes for the six engines too. But we'll have to make sure that the engines in Realism Overhaul are sized. I mean, <laughs> I, I might actually have to widen this if it turns out that the uh, appropriate engines are actually bigger than, uh, than they ought to be. But anyway, uh, that seems fine. But if we hold on to this, we'll see, oops, our attachment nodes seem to be not in the right place. Um, and they're sort of in the right plane, right? These are the two canard ones up front. And so they're they're oriented in the right plane it's just that they obviously need to be the negative in the other direction in the whatever direction that is let's see uh, you uh, in in this green direction I'm not gonna call it the y direction because it isn't actually this blue one is the y direction in the configuration files I hope that this uh, <laughs> red one is the x direction but we'll be able to figure that all out with the wing ones because the wing one is also incorrect and it's not going to be the one with the zero. I can tell it's incorrect because when I picked up the wing left and tried to attach it, it's a little bit dicey to attach these things because the node is inside the body right now. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, not the best strategy, but you can see it's sort of floating higher than it ought to be, and that's because that direction needs to be negative as well. I mean, it needs to be the opposite of what it is, just like the canards and all. I noticed uh, on the wing animation, the wing animation works, but it's called closed. Close. And I know why that is, and we'll see it. Um, my hinges are horrible. There's something definitely wrong with transparency. I think I needed the little thing that I deleted. No, there's something else going on there. The normals are on, on the part that's attached to this bit probably need to be reversed so it's a case I mean well not probably definitely need to be reversed so there's uh, some of those hinge bits need their normals reversed so I'll have to fix that but okay uh, let me let me do everything and then come back well let me show you what I'm gonna do in the configuration at least and uh, reverting uh, reversing the normals oh, I'll show you that too so for the naming of the wing tilt, we have these auto location things which aren't the same as what we're using. I don't know what auto location thing up and down are, but I'm not gonna bother. So that's what we need to do for the wing bits, those two wing bits. If we take a look at the wing, the number that, uh, uh, well, not this one, the body location for the wing, it's this number, this negative 0.26 apparently needs to be positive 0.26 so it's the Z locations so we're gonna reverse all of those and hope that that fixes what we need to fix and we'll see if not uh, we'll have to come up with a different strategy 
and uh, I'll fix those normals and then we'll see if that's sufficient. So the problem seemed to include this last one and so it's actually the outer wing portion. I'm going to press tab and um, if we take a very close look you can see the little dots there. They're, they're definitely on the in, uh, po pointing inside rather than outside. So let me see if I can just select all and mesh normals recalculate outside or shift n you can use and then see how they're all poking out now that's correct let's verify that the wing left ones are all already okay they are okay and then uh, on to the right these are also messed up so shift n and they're pointed outside now make sure that it doesn't mess up the wing accidentally but it should all be pointed outside you can see this normal is pointed out, this one's pointed out. Okay, and then I'm gonna shift it up again and save it all and then import it through Unity the same way I've described. Let's just, I'll meet you again in the game. Okay, back in the game, let's see if stuff is fixed. XB70, no, oh, not 760. And body, body's good, let's click it. Okay, uh, I don't know what's happened. Why, why? Oh, me, I, I made the nodes bigger. Okay, I think that's what's going on there. And yeah, that's where vertical stabilizers go. Okay, so I think we're in business. Wing left. Okay, good. Wing right. Good. And left canard. Oh, come on. Oh. Okay, those need to be reversed in their direction because this is clipping in there. And uh, the right one... Oh, where is my right canard? Oh, I, ac <laughs> I accidentally uh, made the right wing the right canard. What? what did I do there? Okay, I'll fix that later. Uh, vertical stabilizer, vertical stabilizer. Actually, in photos, I found out that they didn't put the NASA logo or the number on the inside part of it, just the outside. And uh, animation, uh, up and down or reversed. My luck. Okay. But I think this gives you an idea. We're pretty darn close. I need to touch up uh, the direction of this and reverse down and up. But yeah, uh, let's uh, just double check that the body gets air intake. Yeah, intake air is there. Oh, it says 600 square meters. That was I wanted six. So I guess we have to do point oh. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, we should flight test it to see, and I should check in realism overhaul how much it actually needs. But okay, next time you see this, uh, we'll be flight, trying to flight test it in realism overhaul, I think. For now, I'm satisfied. I'll just do the touch-ups, and we're pretty darn close. So, I hope uh, this informed you about how to bring something into Kerbal Space Program that is reasonably complicated. This is pretty darn complicated. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.